I think Skylum have released the best tool for Luminar Neo in years, and I'm really excited to share it with you in this video. Incredibly, it allows us to redefine the light and color temperature throughout our two-dimensional photo as if it was in three-dimensional space. How does it do it? It's magic. And it's all part of Luminar Neo's Big Fall upgrade. And if you haven't got hold of that yet, I've got a link in the description that can save you up to 77%, whether you're a brand new customer or somebody who just wants to upgrade their existing Luminar Neo. Right, let's take a look at this tool. All right, let's start with the fundamentals here. Let's open up this unedited photo, jump straight into Develop Raw and just hit Auto Adjust so that Luminar gives us a much better starting point. From there, we're gonna come down to the creative section where light depth lives. Lives. And just then you would have seen this image pop up down here. What is this? What is this crazy voodoo magic? Well, as I grab the amount slider and push that to 100, hopefully you will have seen a change in this photo. Here's our before, here's our after. What's it doing? Well, it's sending in light into our photo defined by this depth map right here. And as I grab this handle and move this through the scene, hopefully you can see just how precise the depth map is that was rendered so quickly as well. So we've got a lot of control here. What we can do is actually extend just how far the effect is. So we can have a really narrow beam of light or we can extend it further into 3D space and we can then control the amount once we've set it up how we want so that the effect doesn't have to be as obnoxiously heavy handed as that. So here's our before and our after. We're able to redefine the light and better balance the exposure in the scene. Okay, let's have a look at another example here. I like the composition, but I just find the photo a little flat. So first of all, again, I'm just gonna piggyback off Luminar Neo's auto adjust feature before jumping into the light depth. And again, you can see how quickly it's analyzed the light depth map in this. And for this one, we're just gonna explore the tool a little bit further. I'm going to push that patch of light further into the road to help lead our viewer's eye in. But this time, rather than just redefining the brightness levels, I'm going to redefine the color in our photo. So you watch this, I can actually warm up that little patch of light right there. So before and after, I've just added in a little bit of warmth there. And if we want to complement that warmth, what we can do is introduce some cooler colors into the near ground and the far ground as well. So we've got a kind of complementary yellow blue addition of light going on. If you think you've overcooked it, which yeah, we have, you know, I'm just doing this so that you can clearly see this in the example. We can just reduce that amount down so it's a little bit of a more subtle introduction. Really intuitive, really easy. Let's look at another example. So for you architectural and real estate photographers out there, I think this is gonna excite you. I'm gonna do a very basic correction with this, just, just auto corrections and auto correct the verticals as well before I move on to just one tool that is gonna really help us out. So of course, light depth. Let me grab the amount so that we can actually see some effect from this tool. And I've deliberately chosen this photo because the geometry in it is actually quite complex, yet you will see just how well the 3D depth map is actually handling that. Look at how it moves through the scene and recognizes all of that geometry. It's fantastic. And now that gives us the ability to control that brightness level inside the property we can grab these handles and expand just how far into the scene that goes. And then, this is awesome as well, if we decide that it's just a little bit too overexposed outside the window, we can grab the brightness far and darken that down as well. So with just a very quick correction in Develop Raw and then using this tool, we've been able to take it from an underexposed exterior, overexposed exterior, and correct this photo. It looks so much better already, and obviously we could come in if we wanted to and work with the white balance so we could cool things off if we wanted to. This tool really gives us a lot of flexibility to take a photo from this to this, from this to this, I love it so much. All right, what's next? I didn't really wanna labor the point with architectural photography, but I'm just so excited by this. Let me just show you another example from the same photo shoot. Let's suppose all we've done for this one is just a bit of auto correction and made sure that our verticals are taken care of. And I just love how quickly Luminar Neo can do that for us these days. 
And I'm just gonna jump into the light depth tool again, bring the amount up so that we can clearly see what we're dealing with before and after. And you can see how we've been able to introduce some light into the interior of the property. The little area under the seat is a bit dark so we can brighten that up. But one of the key issues that we have with this photo is because there's a lot of timber on the inside, we've got a lot of orange cast going onto these walls. So how could we deal to that with this tool? Well, we just need to grab the warmth slider and take that into the negative direction so we're actually taking care of that color cast. If we want a smoother transition so everything's just a little bit more believable, we can bring that softness up. I've probably taken that just a little bit too far. We'll leave a bit of warmth in there. And then we can just work with that amount slider to decide how bright we want that interior. Before I show you how we can use that on portraits as well, I just wanna show you another example where this can be just really useful for real estate photographers. Again, I'm just gonna correct my optics and my straight lines. Yeah, that's close enough. And let's come down to the light depth tool and hopefully you can see what the potential issue is with this photo. It's always gonna be much darker on the inside of the property than the outside. But what if we want to make the focus the interior? Well, that is what I did for the final delivery for the architect. However, it took me a lot of masking and a lot of playing around to achieve that result. So let's see what we can do with this new tool. Look at how we can just push that light into that area. If we grab the softness slider, that's just gonna make that transition a little smoother. And then in the advanced settings, what we can do if we wanna darken down the outside of the property, we can do that. And then the brightness far, which will talk into the kitchen area, being the furthest point of the photo, we can just brighten that up as well. So let's have a toggle of our before and after. We've basically inverted the lighting setup very, very easily, and I love it. All right, can it help us with portraits? Well, absolutely it can. Uh, let's have a look at this one right here. If we come to the edit section, it's already pre-edited, so I'm just gonna go straight to the light depth and make a few assumptions. Let's say we wanna darken down the background and we wanna give her skin a little bit more warmth as well. Well, first of all, we need to activate the tool by cranking the amount up. Now, I don't wanna go too heavy handed with this and I certainly wanna make sure that we're softening off those edges. And just to point out, if you're not happy with that 3D depth map mask, you can also come in and add an additional mask just like normal in Luminar Neo. So there really is a lot of flexibility with this tool. But let's say the first thing we want to do is warm up our subject. Look, we can turn a very, very orangey yellow indeed, but you know, we don't want to take it that far, but it gives us that ability to warm that up. If we grab the depth map slider, you can see just how precisely it's recognizing her face. We can get a tighter beam of light if we want to so we can be really specific about exactly where we're positioning that lighting. I really think this is one of the most useful tools Luminar has introduced in years. I really, really love it. So I wanna keep this quite subtle. What I'm gonna do in the background, I'm gonna darken that down, as we said, and I'm also gonna create that sort of complementary color scheme of neutralizing the background, making it more blue, to complement that orangey look in her skin. So if we look at the original, and then the after, before, and after, I just feel like she's got more of a glow and setting her off against a blue complementary background I think works much better. One of the things I think Skylum does really well is innovation. And this is one of those tools that just bursts out of the box as something new and exciting. Do you remember the Sky Replacement tool? They were first with it and then Adobe copied. Um, dust spot removal, they were the first. Adobe is now copied in Lightroom. I think this is one of those kind of tools that we're gonna see maybe start to pop up elsewhere. Luminar have done it first and I think it is exceptional. It's basically everything I wished the Relight AI tool had have been. Now, if you don't have it yet, as I say, it's part of that upgrade. You can get it via the link in the description. Currently, they're running 77% off. I get a small commission from that and it really helps me keep creating content and educational stuff for you guys. So if you wanna use that link in the description, I really appreciate it. And you also can use the discount code, which is gonna save you even more. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you soon where we might dive into this in a little bit more depth and I'll show you some more examples of how it can be used because I've barely scratched the surface. Thanks very much. See you in the next one. Bye bye for now.